In one of China's most iconic locations, a new development is shaping a cityscape and the lives of its inhabitants. Chongqing is a gateway to the world. This project cannot be an internalized project. It's got to be so seamlessly tied into the city. With two of the largest towers in Western China and the highest horizontal skyscraper in the world, Raffle City Chongqing is also at the center of monumental innovations in architecture and construction that will shape large-scale multi-use developments into the future. It's a once-of-a-lifetime project. It's still an icon in Chongqing. Chongqing is the largest city in western China. It's a city of extremes, a vast urban center surrounded by nature. A study in modernity built on one of the oldest continuously inhabited sites in China, Chao Tianmen. Chao As part of the redevelopment of the city in the 2000s and early 2010s, the local government began to develop plans to transform the Chao Tianmen site. Because of this particular position, Chao Tianmen two airports and the airports of the airports have three the the 当时市里面市政府区政府各级职能部门对我们的项目要求都是非常高的他们觉得肯定这个地方是一定要选择一个有实力的单位而且是有品牌保证的能够让这个项目以后十年百年都能够经得起考验然后大家都是一个认可的项
the ship, the ship being Chongqing. There were other th rumors or ideas that, that the city wanted a singular tower, but I rapidly concluded that singularity was the wrong thing because this is the kind of gateway to the city. A singularity on axis blocks you, doesn't welcome you. So I immediately started thinking in terms of pairing twin towers. And I also concluded that the urban design challenge of this project cannot be resolved by two or three towers. The best way to maximize light and view and a sense of airiness is several towers. While we needed multi-towers, something had to make it cohesive. So I started thinking that we want to start connecting the towers in a way that creates a great urban amenity. Take the people of Chongqing up to the sky to enjoy the river, to enjoy the mountains around them. And actually that became the genesis of the whole concept. The way Moshe works, particularly early on, he generates sketches, you know, on, on plane flights, on, you know, when he's thinking about other things, you know, an idea pops into his head and he'll sketch it into his sketchbook. It's actually amazing how many times, how many projects I've worked on with him where an early sketch becomes the reality at the end of a lot of work. The early sketches provide a creative framework for the development, which will eventually entail residential, hotel, office and retail space. But the sheer size and scale of what is now known as Raffles City Chongqing make it a daunting challenge. The site was a major factor. You know, the size of it, it's huge, it's big. It's the biggest thing we've ever done. When I first saw the site, it's like, wow, it's a huge project. One by one, two millimeter square to be built in a very compact space of 91,712 meters square. So uh, a very tough job, especially on a uh, uneven terrain. Chongqing is a challenging environment for developers with its sloping hills, frequent floods and extreme climate. Everybody kept whispering in my ear about fog, hot wind and earthquakes. The city is high, the city is low, the water is even lower. Actually resolving all of these and the interaction between them in this project is one of the toughest things we've ever done. Actually we've never faced a project with that level of complexity. Work on the Raffle City site has begun. Construction teams have moved in each of them tasked with a different role in a different area of the site. But before they can build up, the site has a major issue to address. Road access to the area has always been limited. As Chao Tianmen is developed, transport links will be expanded, eventually allowing traffic across and underneath the middle of the site. We are at the southwest corner of this whole project. Over here we are doing a bridge interchange here. Why? Because uh, of the traffic congestion here, we were trying. We are installing a bridge interchange here that will link the east and the west. In a way, it's better for our job. Uh, it's a free up traffic. But in the meantime, access has to be improved for construction teams and their heavy machinery. So once we have done the temporary diversion, this when the traffic is diverted to the new road, we will then demolish this existing road. It's a major operation. It's a, it's a project on its own. In fact, we were asking the uh, government, we are a property developer, but we end up doing a bridge interchange here. With temporary access to the site now opening, work can begin on the foundations of the eight skyscrapers and shopping mall that form the heart of the development. To keep Raffle City Chongqing stable on the soft banks of the Yangtze and Jialing rivers, requires around 2,900 piles to be driven deep into the rock bed. Many are bored into the ground using enormous pile drivers, but the compactness of the site and the sheer width of some of the piles makes this a job that requires the human touch. In this case, because of the slenderness and uh, the height of our, our structure, we have to go into this uh, bot pile design. In normal situation, we use uh, bot piling machines, but in this case, because of the pile diameter, we 
have to go for a man or duck house. In Chongqing, piles have been dug for centuries by husband and wife teams. It's a tradition that Raffle City is making good use of here. Using a husband and wife team, that's something very peculiar <laughs> uh, that I think a lot of us have never seen before. This morning it's raining and work underground has been delayed. But as the skies clear, Mr. Zhang and Miss Pu get ready to start their day. Before Mr. Zhang heads into the hole, the couple performs safety checks. Once Mr. Zhang has descended the ladder, the real work can begin. First, he hoists up the cylindrical pieces of rock that machines have already extracted to weaken the surface. Then he begins the work of breaking up the rest of the rock by hammering metal spikes into the ground. These are then lifted to the surface too. Once the basket arrives, Miss Pu empties it into the hopper, which cranes will later lift onto a huge waste pile. <laughs> Water defines and shapes the Chao Tianmen site. Alongside rain, floods are a perennial problem, with the two rivers often overflowing their banks. To keep construction going and ensure the integrity of the development into the future, it's vital that new flood walls are completed on time. Ultimately,高度在1870多左右,它已经超过了朝天门现在我们看到的你刚才描述的那个拱门的那个位置,它已经全部被淹没了。可以这样想象,如果我们不做任何的防御,常年的洪水就可以达到我们现在站的这个位
so the race is on to get the concrete on site as quickly as possible. The timing is tight, but that doesn't mean they can skip quality control. As each truck is filled, samples are taken to make sure the batch is up to scratch. 水泥质量不好的话，有两种结果，就是我们在运输的过程中，它会出现我们产品性能的变化。嗯，第二个就是我们的强度可能达不到我们的要求。The second major test for the concrete samples is strength. The concrete blocks are placed into a crusher machine that exposes them to pressures that exceed anything nature will throw at them. Passing this test means the concrete will be able to withstand tremendous gravitational loads plus the high winds and potential earthquakes that can batter this region. With the tests complete, the concrete truck can leave for the Raffle City site. Pumping can begin. As nighttime falls, work continues. This is a 24-hour operation with no time to spare. Today, the pumps are only sending the concrete up to the 14th floor, but within a few months, they will be at 70 floors, and time will be even tighter. For the moment, the team are just happy to have completed another level on schedule. Two years after clearing the site, construction on Raffle City Chongqing is well underway. Alongside the towers and retail facilities planned, Chao Tianmen has always been a busy transport hub for the city. As part of the new development, Capital Land is planning new ferry and bus terminals. Shidan deep underground, a whole new subway station is being built. It was a puzzle. It took a long time to figure out uh, how the subway connects to the multi-levels of the retail. The Chao Tianmen subway station doesn't just bring pedestrians directly into the new retail mall. It opens up this vital section of the city to the neighboring areas, bringing new life to this ancient urban center. Digging this deep in the Chao Tianmen area inevitably means uncovering the site's history. Along the banks of the two rivers, just below the soil, lie the ancient city walls. As the archaeological team works through the layers of the ancient wall, they come across artifacts from the period. This 
啊，或者朝廷的地方的意思，它是一个一个佐证啊，一个很重要的一个发现。These finds, cleaned up and carefully preserved under a section of the ancient wall, previously hidden away for centuries, will be exposed for future generations to see. Every day, hundreds of tons of steel arrive on site. The smallest pieces form the mesh into which concrete floorings will be poured and at the four corners of each building, steel mega-columns give the structure strength and flexibility. This project was about 10 tons of steel. After we built the engineering and engineering department, the engineering department has been built for 7.6 tons. In this project, there are also many different types of steel. In this project, there are many different types of steel. In this project, there are many different types of steel. Today, one of the biggest sections of mega-column in the whole project is arriving. Soon, this section of mega column will be lifted around 15 floors up by one of the biggest cranes in China. First, skilled workers need to securely attach it to the crane's cables. Next, the column is carefully lifted. Every step of the way is monitored from the ground and by the crane operator 20 floors up. Clear lines of communication are vital. Once the section arrives at floor 15, these workers begin to bolt it into place. Once that job is complete, welding can begin. Installing such heavy columns in the windy and earthquake-prone conditions of Chongqing, the welding has to be of the highest quality. Once the welding is finished, it's checked for weaknesses with ultrasonic testing equipment. Only then can each piece be marked as complete. Readying the towers of Raffle City Chongqing for earthquakes began several years ago. Well before construction kicked off, the designs were tested in lab conditions at Tongji University's Civil Engineering Department where many of China's tallest buildings are put through their seismological paces on a miniature scale. Anti-earthquake measures on site are precisely gauged to match Chongqing's conditions and include several innovations never before seen in buildings of this size. The comprehensive earthquake mitigation system combines a reinforced concrete core in the center of each tower, steel mega columns at the corners, a rigid frame of beams to prevent lateral movement, and four hybrid outriggers, which dissipate seismic energy across the structure, like circuit breakers in an electrical system, allowing the towers of Raffle City Chongqing to be more slender and elegant than traditional techniques would have permitted. With the buildings now structurally sound, work can begin on the project's most iconic feature. The conservatory is a so-called horizontal high-rise that stretches across the top of four towers, So you would get reflection of the water, reflection of the sky, reflection oh. of the cloud. It would be the crown a... of this complex is a conservatory. It's a great place of, of entertainment and pleasure. 
It's a public observation deck. It accommodates a, a spa, health club, gym, swimming pools, gardens. It is a new concept that we have evolved specific to Chongqing and its conditions and its climate and that particular spot. It's actually quite different from, from sense in Singapore. People only associate with the deck. This is actually eight blocks with a composition of towers with a deck as a mass. Initially, it started as an open deck, but with that, most time of the year, given the weather here, we can't operate it. So we decided to enclose it. But enclosing it brings about a lot, a lot of challenges. The weight, first increased weight because you have the enclosure, the steel, the cover and all those. Uh, that's a big challenge, of course. Uh, about one piece is about 1,000 worth tons, 1,100 worth tons. The ones in between the towers, we actually assemble on the podium rooftop, which is about 200 over meters uh, below. And once it's assembled, we lifted it in one lift. Of course, we, every time we lift, uh, the, those, those main lifts, we take about one week to lift up. Today, the first of three huge sections of the conservatory is starting its five-day journey to the top of the South Towers. It's a nerve-wracking time for the team, and it's happening in full view of the media. Today, this is a major milestone for everybody. It's uh, everybody's hard work. The initial lift has gone smoothly, but one day in, warning lights in the control room are flashing. When, when did you discover the problem? Was it just today you find the problem? Uh, we noticed these issues as when we're starting to the lifting. So normally we ensure the same place for the, each of the points of the liftings. But anyway, there's going to be some wings that, 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 that are leading to some of the shakings of the structures. So in that case, uh, the right movement of the key as well as the, the truss below. So that actually the one penetrates through that hose and uh, causing the possible collision between the walls at the edge of the hose. So we worry that the edge of the hose will cause some fissions and was some, some minor damage to the walls leading to safety issues. Further tests show the warnings were right. One of the cables is caught inside the jack that lifts it. If they don't fix the issue, this huge section of the conservatory could become unbalanced. Uh, we did have the issue where one of the cables got stuck and we had to manually cut it off. It freed, so it, it caused the, uh, the, we couldn't move that, that particular uh, jack. Actually, it has a central command center that controls, that monitors everybody. Some people are stationed on the ground, some are stationed on the buildings as they, as they move with the rice. So they do have, we do have a level gauges that will track the level. So the moment we find an issue, we stop. We actually handle that quite fast. Once the trapped cable issue is solved, the rest of the lift continues smoothly. But there's plenty yet to do to secure this section in place. Just as with the towers, pumping concrete at this height is a challenge. But the conservatory presents an extra hurdle. It's enormous horizontal floor space, which needs to be filled rapidly and to an exact level. For this job, 
China Construction Third Engineering Bureau takes the lead. Of primary concern during the concreting process is continually checking the conservatory for movement. So after everything is in, in place, we have to check for movement because we cannot have unbalanced uh, transfer of loading. There's a bearing that supports the load. There's also subsequently, after holding is over, we do have a, what we call dampers to prevent uh, side sway. We designed this for seismic. It's a curve inside. So actually it moves, it's like sways like, uh, when, the, when there's any upward movement, it actually sways. And then the dampers have to minimize all these uh, excessive movements and all those. But if there's uh, excessive movement, we need to know about this. So we do have periodic checks to make, ensure the safety of the whole building. Once the concrete is set, work can begin on the exterior of the conservatory. One crucial element here is the iconic underbelly, designed and manufactured by China Construction Shenzhen Decoration Company, whose bowed shape hints at the sailing inspiration that lies behind the project's central design. The wind conditions in Chongqing make hoisting the underbelly a tough mission. Yeah,提升,把它從200米高,從下面把它提升上去。所以在做這塊木牆的時候,其實截止到目前吧,還是創造了幾個世界之最猛,也算是最高的一次提升。最重的木牆單元板塊提升,面積也是最大的。As the tallest structure in Chongqing, Raffle City is continuously battered by the elements and the eight towers will remain exposed to high winds and rain until thousands of panels of glass have been installed. These highly trained teams work right on the edge of the towers in perhaps one of the most dangerous jobs on a construction site. At 32 floors up, even on good days, the windows are buffeted by wind, and the installing teams have to take special care as they delicately slide the panels into place and secure them. In every structure, main contractor we have two. In the MEPs, we have also different, so they compete each other. Even the ID, we have competition among them. But I always tell it's a friendly competition. And it actually helps because it helps to see whether what can be done. If you can do it, why not you? We encourage cross learning. You learn and you move on. I always tell them, it's not embarrassing to learn. It's when you make a mistake that you embarrass yourself. But go and learn and do better. You know, probably we were handling about 5,000 workers at peak, all having to work harmoniously together. We say that once you're on the ship, work together. Because 
If we don't make it together, this ship will never reach the shore. As general manager for project development, Mr. Go coordinates work across all the construction teams. From the beginning of the project, he was determined to bring discipline and order to the site, in part through an innovative uniform color scheme he developed himself. When I first came, they told only, only yellow color. So I said, I want more colors. No. I said, I have enough mess. I want more colors. And then suddenly, the whole site, we have all these different colors. I think it's fantastic. And then the company adopted this standard for all our projects over China, at least. We make them write their, their company names at the back. When you are able to be easily identified, you tend to behave yourself. As a student, when in a school uniform, you don't smoke. Uh, you don't smoke because one picture and it, it, the, the school knows about it. The 5,000 construction workers of Raffle City Chongqing come from all over China. Life on site can be tough. They brave all the conditions that Chongqing's weather throws at them, and their work is often physically and mentally demanding. Most of them are bussed in daily for their shifts from various dormitory locations around the city. But lunchtime is a chance for them to refuel and enjoy a little of one of Chongqing's best aspects, the local cuisine. <laughs> A hundred and fifty meters below the window installation teams, a totally different type of window presents its own challenges. I would say the skylight is more challenging. If you don't seal the glass and if it's way too late, you cannot water tight the, uh, the retail mall. You cannot continue ID works below. Chinese 我要面临着公司的给我们定的开业的压力，但是呢，咱们的施工的难度以及体量又特别特别大，所以这个是目前对我们来说最困扰、难度最大的地方在这里。I think the the all the effort that we made with the skylights and, and to bring natural light into this massive, massive, massive volume down, you know, below the park, it's something that I'm proud of. I think we did a really good job there. With Windows Ceiling Tower 2 from the top down now, work has begun on creating sample residential spaces on floor 10. Now we are at this sofa unit, it's our four-room flat, we call it Type A1. This one is for the uh, sales or uh, marketing purposes. Now we are doing the hard finishes. Until now we are going to finish. So we are now finishing with this uh, few days time. Then uh, from next month, we can let the customer are uh, coming over to take a look of how we decorate of these are forum flats. During the initial stage of this particular project, there is a lot of a misunderstanding or miscommunication that people do not understand what we are trying to do here. So what we did was say that, hey, you know, we should open up our sales centre. We should let the people know, the community know what we are trying to do here. Chao Tianmen is a place where the, you know, the people of Chongqing has a very strong sentimental connection. And being a responsible developer, we need to let them understand what we are trying to do here. And we also need to understand from them what they hope to see in this place. Every few months, Chief Architect Moshe Safdie returns to the site to inspect progress. It's a chance for him to see how the construction teams are getting on and whether there are any adjustments that need to be made. My career has been very multifaceted. 
I love doing the building type I haven't done yet, so I've done almost every building type. For me, this project is uh, realizing many concepts and dreams about mega scale. And the challenge of the day is can we create mixed use, multiple towers, and with creating a public realm that's worthy of our, of our time, that is a demonstration of concepts I've been in, in interested in and involved in, in my, the 50 years of my, my, my life in architecture. Safety Associates project director Michael Mackey is permanently based in China and shows Moshe around. You know, I've been working with Moshe for 30 something years and the reason I'm here is because, you know, I understand the, the softy process. You know, we take an interest in our buildings where, where we think it's very important. Not that, you know, the original sketches are great, but it's the follow through that, that really makes the difference between a good piece of architecture and, and, and something else. We're hardly controlling every bit of design and the project, but we are trying to at least uh, oversee it and guide it. Mm, really no, the curve is really nice. You can even see the individual curves of the sail. Yeah. Moshe is quick to praise things he likes, but equally quick to point out problems where he sees them. This style looks like it's been here 25 years. <laughs> 30 centimeters and you won't see it. So you don't have to go all the way back. Just go about that shelf and you don't see it. Don't try, do it. One of the big things for Marsha to see firsthand this time is the conservatory, one of the central architectural features of the whole development. Sometimes I look at this and I think we're crazy. <laughs> it's, it's a spectacular spot. I can't think of a, of a spot so central in an urban scape. Everywhere you look, there's another mountain range and uh, just hundreds of towers and it's just, this, this is a very particular uh, combination of nature, the rivers, the mountains, and urban development. We're impatient, so every time I come and say, why aren't we getting there? Because you live for the day where somebody cuts the ribbon and it, it has a life of its own. At the same time, I come here and I send pictures back home to the office and to friends. <laughs> and they all look and wonder and say, only in China, only in China. In New York, it would take, I don't know, it would take a decade or more. So it's a combination of impatience and being extremely impressive at the rate we're moving. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> For projects on the scale of Raffle City Chongqing, progress is dependent on planning. Schedules can only be kept to if the dozens of teams on site work efficiently side by side, but some problems are outside of the scope of regular management strategy. Late in the project, the unthinkable happened, the once in a hundred year flood they had talked about, but never imagined would happen this soon. Our basement B3 level is at 181. We already saw the water levels, flood levels, the season of flood coming above the 181. So finally we built the permanent flood wall to 195 level. We survived the first one or two nights, peaceful. Yeah, the water is rising, in fact, no water ingress. In fact, I was waiting for this flood for a while. Because I, what I don't want is when we are in, already in operation, when you have cars, where you know, the, the more in operation and we have a flood and we couldn't control it. I mean, I hope if there's water to test my flood wall. While most of the site held fast, reports arrived saying that water was coming into one of the basement levels. About 7.30 in the morning, I was informed there's some water coming into the basement. Now, of course, my first thought was, oh no. So I rushed down, but I could see water coming out from the uh, door opening. We couldn't see because the water was too, too big for us to see what, where the water was coming from. So finally, I managed to get a ladder and when I climbed, I saw oh, there was a 50 diameter 
post. On closer inspection, the water was found to be coming in through a series of small holes behind a wall that workers had forgotten to seal, not from a breach of the flood walls. The moment I saw that, I, I breathed a sign of relief to say, oh, OK, that is manageable. We used wood, plugged it in. And after the flood level went down, we actually plugged with permanent concrete in field. And now the problem is permanently solved. So from what I know now, anything below 192, we are safe. We are probably one of the few basements along the, along the rivers, uh, the river bank that was not flooded. Yeah, so I think we survived that, this, this test very well. With the flood held at bay, Interior work on the retail mall, known as the Podium, can go ahead at full speed. As we develop the interior design for the, for the Podium, for the retail, to give the place a, a clear identity and sense of location, the one on the side of the Yangtze is paved with a beautiful brown stone that sort of takes on the brownishness of, uh, of the Yangtze. The Jialing side is all silvery, kind of bluish materials and, and paving. And then the, the center axis is more neutral. We actually take off the rivers and bring it into the building. As the site nears completion, Work is ramping up on the environment control systems that will keep the retail space, office and hotel areas cool during Chongqing's burning hot summers, at less cost to the environment than typical developments of this scale. Because Chongqing is very hot in summer, it can reach up to 40, 43 degrees. But if summer is relatively short, it's only three months, so it's a challenge. If you design a system very big, and cater for very high, then actually your waste of your investment. Before we come in, actually they have their own design. They have a multiple chiller and multiple plant. They consider individual components separately, them independently. Our design actually, we integrate them all together. We treat them as one system. Raffle City uses a district cooling system, meaning that one integrated network of chillers cools every area of the site. At the heart of the system, the chillers produce cooled water that feeds into air conditioning units across the development. From this integrated and centralized approach, we can generate more energy efficiency and at the same time, we can offer a better solution and save more energy for capital land. Saving energy is part of a policy across the site that prioritizes the environment. It's an ethos that extends to the landscape design. Moshe Safdi is well known for architecture that integrates natural scenery into the buildings. At Raffle City Chongqing, landscaping extends from Gateway Park right into the buildings themselves. The horizontal structure that connects four of the towers, known as the conservatory, is a climate-controlled space specifically designed to house interior landscaping features. You, you, you see, the interesting thing about this is that on one side you see glass, on the other side you see aluminium. Because uh, where it's facing the west sun, we're using aluminium. 
facing the, uh, the east sun getting glass. So we want the natural light in, but we don't want too much sun. Once the conservatory windows are in, thousands of plants can be housed in what is effectively a custom-built greenhouse. Mushi himself, he wanted this conservatory to be like a tropical garden, like a greenhouse. Right? So we are trying to keep his vision. Ngongliang是类景观的部分,比较特殊,因为在是类生产的植物本身品种比较少,我们要在是类生产的话,它首先是要弱光,比较光照需要度少一点的植物。我们现在的品种大部分是铁冬青。首先它的毒感和重生的
It's summer 2019, and transport links into the site are all open. Cars can now drive around the perimeter, as well as right underneath the middle of Raffle City. A new bus interchange delivers pedestrians right to the entrance of the Podium Mall. And two floors above, the new subway station is almost complete. Perhaps most important of all, above ground, the sail-like surface skin of the towers is now complete. And the iconic look that inspired the whole project, which comes to life lit against the night sky, is ready for the world to see. At the main doors of the podium, crowds are gathering. Excitement is building as the whole complex begins to open. How are we ever going to leave this job? I came for this job. I've been here for the last seven years. We have this sense of belonging to this job. The sad thing is when we complete, we have to leave. After Raffles City Chongqing is up, everybody starts to realise that, you know, the city is so beautiful and uh, it starts to open up internationally to receive customers, visitors and tourists. It is a gateway of the city to the world and the world realised that there is a city called Chongqing through this uh, particular project. Chongqing kind of blows my mind because it, the intensity of the place is just amazing. And unlike the coastal cities in China, it feels to me like the frontier, the frontier city. And it's going to be fascinating to watch the kind of older Chongqing and this, you know, air-conditioned bliss of our own complex come together and I think each will affect the other a little bit. Lifeus,我们从今的来福斯,我们真是对他充满了希望,也期待来福斯越来越好,相信从今会越来越好。It was just fun. It was fun to go in in the morning, and it was fun to work late at night because you were surrounded by people who were just as excited. When you get to a point where the contractor is coming to you with an idea that they're not just looking for the easy way out, you know, once they, once they click into that same kind of mode, that they, they're doing something special. That's why I do this. That's you know, it's, buildings are great and, and it's a challenge, but it's that team aspect is is, is what makes it fun. It's unfortunate now with, with the COVID and all that that Moshe hasn't been able to. You know, he was here in December, but it wasn't really finished yet. So you know, I I, I just feel for the guy. Not to be able to have breakfast in, in Botanica has got to be killing him. <laughs> so I feel very fortunate to be here. To be a master, you have to be true to your vision. And Mushi can really showcase that. From the sketch, actually, you can imagine what is the end. He kept the seal concept. It's a once of a lifetime project. Well, probably uh, sad that we finished, but also glad that we have done a good job on this. It's now an icon in Chongqing. I always tell that this job it was the most challenging, most satisfying job I've done. I will say the best. Six years since work began, Raffle City Chongqing is complete, and the iconic Chaotianmen site is once again 
a gateway into the city. A remarkable architectural achievement whose lasting legacy is the people who designed and built it and the people who will populate and enjoy it for decades to come.